Hello everyone, my name is Craig Chamberlain with Precision Electric at precision-elect.com. Your industrial automation service center drives motors controls. We've done it for well over 30 years. So feel free to give us a call if you have any questions. This video is gonna cover a more advanced feature of the ABB ACS 355 variable frequency drive in which we're going to actually tune it. Now, standard drives don't come pre-tuned because tuning requires a connection to your motor. So after you've wired your drive up, connected it to the motor, we can go through the tuning process. Now, just so you know, in order to tune the drive to the motor, you do need to have the nameplate information off of your motor. Most motors have it printed right on it. It'll give you the motor's current, RPM, uh, voltage, and essentially we're gonna enter that into the drive, we're gonna tell it all the characteristics of the motor, and then we're gonna run a command on the drive to actually tune it. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is enter the main menu. So I'm gonna press the menu button, and I'm gonna go to the parameters. So I'm gonna press the enter key. And once the parameters come up, we're gonna to go to parameter group 99, which should be at the top of the list. So we're gonna click select. And this is where we're, to, where we're gonna start entering our motor data. So the first 9901 is our language. The macro we set up in previous videos, that's actually your wiring setup and your controls. And this is where we're gonna start our tuning. It's a 9903. This is our motor type. Now, if we look in our manual, we will see that in 9903, there's two different types of motors we can pick. AM is asynchronous motor. Almost a good majority of you will be using an asynchronous motor. This is a standard non-permanent magnet motor. PMSM is a permanent magnet motor. Essentially that the, uh, the chassis of it actually contains permanent magnets which are required to, for rotation. This is a, a more unique situation. Most people don't have permanent magnet motors. If you have them, you're probably already aware of it. So in my case, I have a standard asynchronous motor, so I'm gonna keep mine set to AM. Then I'm gonna go down to 9904, and this is where we're gonna select our tuning type. I'm gonna click Edit, and we have scalar frequency, which basically means we're gonna do standard volts per hertz without tuning. But I'm gonna go down to Vector, and I can choose between Vector Torque or Vector Speed. Vector torque control basically follows your current. So in other words, you give it a set point, and rather than going at a static speed, it follows a static load. So in other words, it might speed up or slow down to maintain a constant torque. Now this is very popular for like a wire drawer machine where they have to maintain a certain amount of tension in the line because they're drawing wire through dies. And so the drive or motor may need to speed up at certain times when the torque is less, and slow down when the torque increases. Maybe it gets jammed up a little bit so that you want the drive to slow down. But you wanna maintain a constant amount of work as you pull on that, on that wire. Most people are gonna be using vector speed control, which we're gonna be using in this demonstration, which basically uh, uses the current from the motor to maintain a constant speed. And that's why we're tuning it, so that we can get better control of our motor's speed at, uh, at lower speeds. And essentially the tuning process is what that's for. So now let's go to 9904, and I did uh, vector speed. Now let me go to 9905. This is your motor nominal voltage. Most motors will have two different voltages. This one's a 230, 460 volt motor. I chose 230 volts because I'm bringing in 230 volts and my drive is a 230 volt drive. If you bring in 460 volts to your drive and your drive is a 460 volt drive, then I would put the 460 volts information from my nameplate into the drive. But in my instance, I'm gonna do the 230 volts because I'm bringing in 230 volts, which also tells me for 9906, that's my current. Right now, my nameplate current on my, drop, my motor is 1.7 amps. That's at 240 volts, so I put it at 1.7. Motor nominal frequency is my nameplate frequency. My nameplate frequency is 60 hertz, so I'm gonna leave mine the default 60 hertz. Motor nominal speed is my RPM rating on my nameplate of my motor. Mine's 1700, so I set that accordingly, and I click Save. And my motor nominal power is the actual horsepower rating of my motor. In this case, I set it to a half horsepower, which also matches the nameplate information. And then if I go down to ID run, I can turn it on, and this will basically initialize the motor ID run or the tuning process. Notice that the light up here begins to flash, and it keeps flashing on the screen, alarm 219 ID run, which is essentially of informing you that the motor's about to initialize the ID run 
on the drive. And the ID run is really good because it essentially allows you to tune the drive to the motor. And so there it goes. I went ahead and pressed the start command and it's running it now. And you'll notice it's uh, whining a little bit. One important note to make is while it runs the ID run, it is gonna rotate the motor. So before you run the ID run, make sure you disconnect the motor from any load and also make sure your direction of rotation isn't gonna cause any damage to any external equipment. So right now it's running the ID run, which can take up to 60 seconds. And during this process, you just essentially wait. And it's gathering current data is what it's doing, is it's running the motor at different frequencies. It's adjusting the speed internally. It's monitoring the current loop inside the drive. And that allows it to give you better performance at lower speeds, which is, as I said before, the reason why we're running a tuning. Notice it's also adjusting the carrier frequency. That's why you actually hear different audible levels. Sometimes it's louder, other times it's quieter. That's another performance test. So it's gonna to try to find the best, the best carrier frequency to run the motor at as well for performance. All right, sounds like it's finishing up. And it has stopped. All right, and it switched back to off. The light is no longer flashing and the alarm is no longer flashing on the screen, and I have officially tuned my motor. So let me go ahead and exit out of this. Now if I just press start, I'm in local control, my speed is at zero. Let me see where I got my actual speed set at here. I'm trying to remember where I set my set point. Ah, here's the issue. Gotta to switch to remote control. Start, there it goes. And now I'm running with the fully tuned motor. And that's it. Okay, so now that it's tuned, I just need to verify that it's actually set to local control. I can press this local remote button to switch. And then I'm gonna press the start button and It'll go whatever my set point is on my keypad. I can use the up and down arrow keys. But actually, if I look at my current here, my current's actually running lower than it was before. So I'm actually getting better performance already, just running without a load. And obviously I can use my up and down arrow keys to change the speed to whatever I want and stop it any way that I would like. But that's all there is to this video. Essentially, we have tuned the drive to the motor. Now we can hook the motor back up to the load and run it as we ran it before. And you will get up to pretty much full torque at nearly zero speed. So 5% speed or less, you'll still get the full torque out of your motor, which means you'll get the best possible performance even at lower speeds. If you have any questions, as always, don't hesitate to call us. Remember, we're Precision Electric at precision-elect.com. My name is Craig Chamberlain. Thank you for stopping by and viewing this video. Don't forget to check out our other videos at our channel. And also, but we're only a phone call away. So drives, motors, controls, you name it, we can do it. I'll see you in the next video.